to the Sketch Cover Comic Cast. viewers we are at you again with another world's finest team up uh issue today i uh, got my man uh, clay paula here going to introduce our very special guest clay take it away my friend thank you so much mr hussey guys we've got a phenomenal guest today super blessed to have him on the show we've got mike miller the artist of the iconic series injustice and he's got a huge announcement if you haven't already heard He's just going to talk about it a little bit more today about this awesome venture he is starting. But Mike, thanks so much for joining us, man. How's it going? Uh, thank you. It's going well. Another beautiful day in San Diego. Can't complain. Oh, wonderful. Oh, man. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I uh, Are you going to San Diego Comic-Con? Every year. Booth 5568 right in front of Artist Alley. Hey, Nate. Nice plug. I like it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, cool. So, dude, we always start off every podcast just check or not every podcast well actually yeah every podcast yeah it's... me and james talk about the family geek front we just like to hear what's it like going on for you know just geeks in general but you know for me and james but also for you you are a professional artist but what is it like in the house of a well-known artist i mean what is the house of miller like is it a house of cards is it a house of joy is it a house of kids or is it a house of hmm injustice so what's up mike what's going on in your house I have five children, so it is a house of noise. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I have the door locked right now. <laughs> and at uh, some point in this, you'll probably hear someone pounding on it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got you. It's, uh, you know, I love, I love the noise. I mean, starting a YouTube channel, it's, it's made it hard to find time when I can, you know, because, man, I'll just go on for hours. And my daughter's like, that's because you like to hear yourself talk. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I love the interaction when you have people like live chatting and then I love it. So, but it's hard to find time. So yeah, a very noisy house where everything breaks. That's, nice. that's nice. my world. That's a, what, what age are your kids? Just out of curiosity. My youngest who is special needs and has a real talent for breaking television sets is uh he's eight years old and then i got micah who is 10 uh isaac who is 11 uh eden who is 15 and elijah who is 17 wow wow holy cow that is quite the the spectrum of ages okay. holy smokes yes it is and just out, i bet and uh just out of curiosity like what do they think about their dad being a comic book artist i mean you've worked for You've done amazing projects for DC and, and other companies, but I mean, what do they think about you being a professional artist? They're used to it. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's just life for them. <laughs> I gotcha. That's cool. Well, do they ever like, I mean, do they have any favorite series that they talk to you and say, dad, that was like way awesome. Or are they just like, yeah, eh, you know, <laughs> I'm on an interview right now, Eden, <clears throat> ask somebody else. I'm on an interview. Oh. You're going to have to cut that out. She's, like, okay. poke. She's looking through my window. See, it's like nonsense. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's awesome. No, I almost wish we could keep that. that yeah, that's <laughs> it's like illustration of point right there. I didn't know where you went uh, and just like, bam. Keep it. Keep it. I don't care. Um, yeah, no, they love my comic strip that I did for the better part of a year, which I should get back to, but I've just been so busy. Um, bless this mess. You can You can go to facebook and just look up bless this mess comic and i've yeah. got like 200 strips of me and my family and just the insanity that is my life and it's it's i mean it's laugh out loud funny and i'm not i'm not touting <laughs> myself saying that i'm just saying that people i show it to people and they they can't help but laugh out loud because <laughs> my kids do crazy things and uh i have drawn it <laughs> <laughs> but that's their favorite they don't really care about all the superhero stuff and all that stuff it's funny oh, i was uh, one of my best friends in this industry is ed mcginnis and he's uh wow. his kid uh we were at a con together salt lake a while ago and his kid was there and his kid comes over to my booth and he looks at my stuff and he's like wow i wish my dad could draw like this <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome 
Oh no, this is awesome. I'm looking at it right now. This yeah, is great. It's so jaded about their parents, you know, whatever their work is. It's like, oh, dad's an astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> but Bobby's dad works at Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, profit without honor in his hometown. <laughs> I love yep. it. <laughs> yep. It looks great. I'm um, actually looking at it now, doing a little multitasking. This is cool. This is very <laughs> cool. I love the uh, Christmas card as well. That's funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll do a uh, Indiegogo for that sometime too. <laughs> I just I want to do so much. There's not enough of me, you know. There's not enough time in the day either. It's just there's this life just seems to move too fast. But do, you know, here's kind of a fun question and. I guess this also kind of plays into family life. Cause I'm just curious. I mean, I'm not sure if your kids are gamers or not. I've got a, a 16 year old, but I've also got a 17 month old. And so, but my 16 year old is a huge gamer. She loves just about anything you put in front of her. Big kingdom hearts fan, uh, loves all the Pokemon games for, you know, Nintendo DS and stuff. But at the same time, you drew injustice and justice is one of the all time best selling fighting games I mean, have you played that? Have your kids played that? I mean, what do you think about that? I don't like fighting games. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Holy cow. What about any of your kids? I mean, have they played it? Uh, they might have played it a little bit, but we're we're I mean, they like Terraria, Fortnite, um oh, what else okay. are they playing right now? You know, um what's the one that uh Overwatch is based on? Oh gosh! Um, Make me sandwich that one. Uh, okay. Yes. Oh, if you Team had Fortress that. Two. Team Fortress Two. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, they like those. Uh, I've always been. Uh, I haven't been able to play much lately, uh, just because yeah. I've been so busy. But man, I was a full-on COD head. Um, really? Yeah, man. I could go freaking thirty and zero on free for all. <laughs> I was like, I wasted so much time playing that game. And now it's like, you know, you lose, you stop playing and it's not like riding a bike. You lose, <laughs> yeah. you lose your ability. And I go on there now and I just get murdered. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I was freaking hardcore <laughs> a few years crazy. ago. Holy yeah. cow. I would have never guessed that, man. I, dude, I, cause I, I honestly, I played Injustice 2 a, a crazy lot. I wasn't like professional level good at all, but just casual, loved it a lot. Love that I could be TMNT and fight Batman at the same time. But I also loved that like they included, I think it what was the gold edition. I forget whatever the premium edition was. It came with a little Supergirl comic that you actually drew. And I was like, man, that's yeah. gotta be so cool that like you're, you're so involved in this game in so many different ways. So it's just, I didn't know how, what was your experience or what were your well, thoughts? Not only that, man, I, I actually wrote, I was hired to write a story Bible pitch for injustice Two. Wow. Uh, and I did write it and I got paid for it and I got an NDA, so I can't discuss it. But I'm <laughs> but you know, the game's out, so it's like it's obviously they're not they didn't right. use it. They used something else. Mine was mine took place fifteen years after the events of Injustice One. Yeah. Um, and so I think they want they they wanted to go with something more like immediate. I gotcha. Uh, Cause I had like I had a character I was creating called Missy J who was like in the comics, you know, that she had Harley and the Joker had a kid, right? Oh wow. And, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. So I was like, well add 15 years to that. And That's have, like, the seven cool. Freaking that is cool. Yeah. I had wow. some great, I had some cool stuff. I had, I had um, Arsenal like in the comics, he's dead, right? Because right. Uh, the teen Titans got killed in the Metropolis explosion, but I had him survive it. Like, what's his like? Uh, you know, Johnny got his gun, mm-hmm. like with no arms and no legs, and he got all cybernetic limbs and stuff that turn into his arsenal. That is a oh, really right. cool pitch. With that, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because I had uh, every time I'd go to a Chicago con, you know, I would find somebody ultimately who worked at. Nether realms would come to my table and be like, "Hey, I worked on Injustice too," and every single one of them, I pitched this idea and I said, "I have an idea for Injustice too," and I'm like, "Okay, so it's 15 years later. Superman is being let out on parole by President Bruce Wayne, right? Oh, wow. And they're they're talking through, you know, his repentance and his understanding that of of where everything went wrong." 
and they're they're at they're at Martha Kent's funeral, and then they mosey over to Lois Lane's grave, and they're talking and they're talking, and Superman says she's not here, and Batman says no, she's in heaven, she's in a better place, or blah blah whatever, and then Superman says no, she's not here and he uses his heat vision to blast open the the grave and it's empty oh pan to razal ghoul's oh Oh, man yeah where where a 15 year old boy is training with red hood oh come on dude that would be great right and so God. I kept I kept telling it to all these every every Nether Realms guy I could find. You got goosebumps, didn't you? Because I got goosebumps. Too. I did. That's <laughs> awesome. Gosh. Um, and so eventually, uh, the lead designer at Nether Realms emails me. He's like, "Hey, one of my here's the, here's the thing though. I finally got a hold of one of the writers at Nether Realms at one of the at at C two E two or Chicago or something like that." And I tell him that, and he's like, "Well, we don't take external pitches." What? Because right? okay. he's one of the writers. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but like one of the character animators, or or I think um, that I told it to, told it to the lead designer, and he contacted me, and he's like, "We want your pitch. We want to, We want to pay you to write the full pitch." And he freaking, I wrote it. I wrote it out like a whole freaking movie, um, oh. movie treatment. Um, you know, with the complete story. Oh man, it's so great. Brainiacs in it and, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And it's like this awesome story of redemption. And it's one of the better things I've ever written. And oh. they loved it, but then psh, nothing. Oh, oh radio no. man. it was funny because the, the, the lead designer was like, we were going back, back and forth. He was sending me artwork and that I wasn't supposed to share with anybody. And he was like, <laughs> we we're, you know, talking blah, blah, blah. And it was, he was like so excited to, you know, do, and then psh, radio silence. And I don't know. That's so frustrating. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like as a <laughs> fan, I'm like, come on. I want to see that. Right. <laughs> yeah. It would have been sick, man. It would have been that. So sick. Yeah, really. And Ross Al Gold. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would have been amazing. I'm just curious, though. In your story, was Beast Boy alive? I did not have Beast Boy. No. Oh, okay. I just, I I wanted him. I really love Beast Boys. I just wanted him to see it. I just wanted to see him in. But but that's the thing is that you know Lois has been there with Ra's Al Ghul for 15 years. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's nuts. But but Lois, you know, uh, the Lazarus Pit doesn't always bring people back right it's kind of a pet cemetery situation once in a while <laughs> that's right and so lois was a little bit off kilter but uh the baby young <sighs> young uh cal al ghul <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool <laughs> that's, that's it's because he's so i mean think about it he's basically batman with superman powers that's so cool wow. it's like speeding bullets but it's with like john <laughs> kent oh i love it <laughs> God, I'm just surprised people don't use um, the Al Ghul folks that often. You know, like they're always like, I don't know, to go off of like on a tangent, they did like a Legion Lost where he was the main bad guy against the Legion of Superheroes. You forget the dude's immortal. You know, like you could do stuff with him. That's just amazing. I love it. Oh, that is awesome. Well, I mean, just hearing your, your, your writing ideas, Mike, I mean, like, have you thought about really, again, we're going to go into your new venture here shortly but at the same time have you always enjoyed writing i mean or have you always been an artist i love first? writing i love writing i'm an artist first simply because that's my profession but um coming up with stories i mean ask my wife she gets sick of hearing about it it's like <laughs> oh, i got an, i came up with another one in the shower it's great <laughs> <laughs> i can relate i can absolutely relate oh, yeah yes. That's but, awesome. Well, I mean, I'm a storyteller. I can't wait to start my own universe where I can constantly just come up, let the, just let the creative juices pour out of me. You know, it oh. hasn't. Ha- I haven't done it in in a while. It's like when I start when I started Alias back in the day, and I was like, you know, I had my, I knew I had this avenue where I could just create stuff, get it funded, drawn. Man, stuff was just pouring out of me, like like. You know, like a sieve. I was, I was, <laughs> you know, I would come, I would just lay down in bed and I'd just, I'd think of like, I thought of like 
six 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 gun samurai six gun <laughs> samurai that is the best and then i'd freaking just have this whole story like just, <laughs> just yeah. you know because it's like the name is so great i have to do this. That is so, uh, you know a lot of times i'll do that i came up uh, let's see uh deal with the devil deal with the devil oh that's great what if you had uh fbi manhunter and he's got to work with the serial killer to save an innocent person and it's like and that <laughs> sounds really good. I was yeah, looking I mean, into that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, dude, my, I'm 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 a creative. The fact that I can that I can make a living as an artist is bonus for me. But yeah, I mean, you get my juices flowing, and you give me give me the hope of an avenue where I can I can release this, and it's just gonna come pouring out of me. That's awesome. That is really cool. Well, on that note, let's let's kind of go into let's try and like just give our listeners um, some insight into just how you got into comics. Uh, who were your favorite characters and all that stuff? But let's just start right there. You know what? What was your first comic? Like, when did you really fall in love with comics as a whole? The first comic I can remember purchasing from Comics and Fantasies in San Jose when I was in oh, nice. third grade was that Sideways. John Byrne, Fantastic Four issue. I don't even remember the name. Oh, that one. Remember it was in the and when they're in the the negative zone. It is down in my library right now. Uh, It is issue two fifty two. Yeah, that's like the first comic I can remember buying. I know I might have, I might have grabbed some stuff from Seven Eleven. I remember that. I I remember one I didn't buy because it just didn't appeal to me. Was that. Tony Stark wearing his Iron Man costume, staring into the mirror, holding a a, a drink. Oh yeah, demon in a bottle. <laughs> I'm like that. That does not interest me at all. <laughs> As a kid, <laughs> As a kid. <laughs> why is he not drinking Pepsi? What is this? <laughs> oh, good. A uh, super her, super alcoholic. Nah, yes. oh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that one. Hard pass. <laughs> Who's drawing X Men? Paul Smith. All right. I have Ooh, that's right. yeah. Gosh. Um. And see, I collected that with X Men classics, but oh my gosh, that was great. Like where you had, I think he took over with the like the Morlock series, right? Like where Storm fights to become leader of the Morlocks. That was Paul Smith. I think. Um. No wait, that I was Cockrum. Remember his right? first issue, but I I came into comics when Paul Smith was on x-men so <sighs> i didn't have i didn't get his earlier issues uh my first i remember when he left i was devastated because i i hated john romita jr's <sighs> oh, i love God. it now yeah I yeah but it. like when he came on and he was poor man's paul smith i was like no <laughs> never again so, i think he <laughs> won me over with the um hyborian age thing where they you know they took over and did the conan stuff but yeah, Paul Smith was good. Paul Smith was really good. Yeah, he came to my wedding. Seriously? Yeah. That's my freaking brag, man. <laughs> Paul Smith came to my wedding. That's awesome. So He's question, video. <laughs> who are who are your influences? Would you count like Paul Smith as one of your artistic influences? Well, as, you know, it's changed over time, but as a kid it was John Byrne and Paul Smith. Mm, they mm-hmm. they were they were my money, man. They were they were the best. You know, I loved Walt Simonson, but I didn't. Mm. I didn't take to his style. He's, I guess, he wasn't clean enough. Like you know, mm. Burn in Austin, super clean. Paul Smith, oh, and Terry Austin. Wysiek, uh, I think Wysiek was thinking him. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, so so clean, so clean. And and as much as I love Frank Miller and um, Sienkiewicz, oh Sienkiewicz, oh Sienkiewicz, especially with the Demon Bear saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But as much as I loved it, I didn't want to draw like that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Back then, it was those guys. Oh man, oh. look at some of these great John Byrne fans. It's too bad. I love a, it, man. Like, human being. <laughs> <laughs> but like John Byrne, like he was Superman was like one of my like big heroes. You know, back in the day, yeah. and like. When I was going through like you know middle school, high school, I made it like my mission to track down all the post crisis Superman. So like finding the Burn Run, oh my gosh, those are like fantastic. Like his like Superman, his Man of Steel stuff, or yes, yeah, well yeah. both. Like his Man of Steel, and then 
getting, and this is before, you know, they started doing trades. And so I had to go comic shop to comic shop to comic shop yeah. and track them down. Man, yeah, you remember like, the Man of Steel issue where he, where he executes uh, Zod? Yes. Oh, and forever. Um, okay. So I got the issue, like the second part of the Supergirl saga. I had one and two. And then it was years before I was able to get like the third. And so always wondering, you know, like what happened in that issue? I mean, I knew, <laughs> you know, he executed Zod, but how did it go down? Right. And when I finally got that, I was like, okay, this is one of the holy grails of my collection. Right here. <laughs> it's great. It was great. Yeah. And, uh, more, more nowadays, I think my, well, technically my biggest influence would be George Bridgman. You know, mm -hmm. structure, form, anatomy. Well, not so much anatomy on him. But but as far as who do I look at when I want to get amped up to draw, mm -hmm. it is without question one team. It is Carlos Pacheco and Jesus Marino. Oh. And it's wow. the team. Right. I mean, as much as I love Carlos, his pencils, I love seeing his pencils and stuff. But when somebody else inks him, it's just not the same. Jesus mm -hmm. Marino brings in a level of texture and depth that that without him it's like you know peter without paul it's uh <laughs> you know it's just not uh it's not the whole package for me and as a penciler and inker that's what i look for and you know so i'll, I'll have like uh what's what do i have here avengers forever the trade oh. just sitting on my desk uh over here i have JLA, JSA, Virtue and Vice. Um, oh, that's also good. Yeah, these are, oh, yeah. and, you know, even his older stuff. I mean, Avengers Forever is old, right? That's like 2000. But it's so. still got so much great character. Yeah, just flipping, I'll just flip through it and I'll be like, okay, I want to draw now. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I never get sense. artist block because uh, I'm like, and I want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking of drawing, I think it's a good follow-up question. You've done a ton of different projects. I think you, how, you've been in the business, what, 20, two decades? 26 years. 26 years. Mm. Holy smokes. I mean, so over that time, what's, I mean, who's been your favorite character to draw or what's been like your favorite project over all this time? My favorite project are the Hedge Knight books. Because, <sighs> oh, okay. So because glad everything else I've done, um, Prior to that is I'm either part of a team or a, as in like, like I have the uh, Superman Emperor Joker book over here, right? Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's Loeb. It's well, it's McGinnis, mm -hmm. right? It's McGinnis, Mc yep. Mankey, it's me, mm -hmm. but it's like you pick up that trade and it's like, oh, here you did one issue or you did two issues in justice. It's like half you know, a, a third me, maybe a quarter me in certain t at certain times. DC Universe Online Legends, I did that whole series, but oh, yeah. Howard, Howard mm -hmm. Porter did half of it too. Yeah. Which, you know, he was great. Um, my JLA run is, as a trade, it's like I did like three issues in this entire trade. And mm -hmm. so, but the Hedge Knight series, it's me, beginning and end. It's me, 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 me. <sighs> and, you know, when I want somebody to see me, you know, I like that. I well, like and before we recorded, I told you, I was like, that's one of my favorite. I love seeing those characters like come to life. That's yeah. just, that's great. Yeah, me too. Like, so uh, and I'll probably, great. even if I'm like in the middle of my full universe of stuff, next time George finishes another Dunkin' Egg story, I'll probably do that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope he does. Oh my gosh. That's a fun series. Oh, he, will. He, he, he loves Dunkin' Egg. That's the only one. Like, uh, was it HBO was talking about doing all of these Game of Thrones spinoffs? I read that on right? Comics Alliance and, or Com yeah. CBR today. And George is like, um, yeah, but not Duncan Egg. Because <sighs> he's not done, right? He doesn't want to get into another Game of Thrones thing where he's not done with the story mm -hmm. and then they have to finish it for him. And he's like, when I'm done with Duncan Egg, then you can do it. I'm like, you know. If you change your mind, my original pages will be worth a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, your the artwork for that was was just phenomenal. When I was doing like research for the show, and then I was like, "Oh, Duncan Egg, yes, <laughs> yes." That's great. Thank you. 
So let's see, we talked about some influences. I guess growing up in comics, what, I don't know, series or character or whoever like solidified your, okay, like this is my thing. This is what I like. This is like for me, like I said, like it was like Superman. Who's your guy? Who's your hero? Well, when I was a kid, it was Wolverine. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. But I don't know. They they uh they added extra soy to Wolverine over the years. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh oh, you mean this immortal guy with a perfect healing ability? Yeah, doesn't want to smoke cigars anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a trip to go back and read like because um, I went on like a, a whole binge. I guess like two years ago of reading the my essential x-men and you know just going forward and from like the early claremont you know burn stuff i'm like wow wolverine is different like he went from like the hellfire club almost killing him to now like he can regenerate from like a single like sale like and, and i think that oh, takes away some the of infinity the infinity stone the single drop yeah. of blood resurrection yes oh, oh yes <laughs> Like, I remember he's in the Savage Land, and a dinosaur bites his arm, and then they're like, Wolverine, are are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm a fast healer. I should be fine. But, like, you're legit worried about the guy. He was great. I just remember having X-Men classics and reading it at my grandma's house, and I didn't have the conclusion to the Dark Phoenix saga. It ended with uh, Leland taking Wolverine and increasing his mass and making him fall, you know, through the ground. And I legit was like, they killed Wolverine. He's dead. And then, you know, he pops out of the sewers. And that's another one I had to track down like years later, but I legit thought he died. But, you know, now I'd be like, (laughs) Oh, he's fine. He's, he's going to no sell that, you know? Yeah. So Mike, it's like clear just hearing your heart in comics and your love for the business that, I mean, you obviously are just a super creative guy and let's just go ahead and transition into to what I think is the meat of this this whole interview. And recently, you've come out and you've announced that you're coming out with your very own comic book publishing company called Blacklist Comics. And we would just love to hear wh- why did you start this? Uh, you know, what really fueled your your desire to do this? And I mean, like, what what's what what is Blacklist Comics? What differentiates it from all the other publishers out there? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump's election gave me such a booster shot of hope that this economy would rebound because I was terrified. Well, you know what? I believed he was going to elect- win the election, but on the off chance that Hillary Clinton had won, the economy would have freaking tanked. And I had no hope. But him getting elected was like this ray of sunshine parting the clouds and a rainbow cast over this cloud. But it was God's <laughs> rainbow. And, <laughs> and I was like so hopeful. And I was talking to a friend of mine. I'm like, I have so much hope now. He's like, I do too. Let's do something. And, <laughs> and so I started, I started um, you know, I, just, I wanted to do my own thing. And I wanted to, I have a whole a 16 page white paper on how to successfully launch and run a comic book company in this day and age. Right. Cause I've been thinking mm-hmm. about this for a long time. This is not my first rodeo, but what it requires is a lot of money up front because it is not the type of thing that will turn around and, and deliver profits mm-hmm. in the first two years, the first three years, you know, it's it's a long term investment, right? Um, to do a comic book company, and what is different about what I want to do is I I am not interested in being another image. I am not interested in being a small press company. I want within the next twenty to thirty years, whether I'm alive or not, for this company <laughs> to be it's it's not the big two. I want it to be the big three or mm-hmm. f- to topple one of the big two. And that's the idea. And the, I, so I know it sounds insa- insane because it hasn't been done, but the reason it hasn't been done is because of the f- bifurcation of say image comics. Like if, if the image comics guys with all their press and all their talent and all their money had come together 
and formed a cohesive union, a singular universe where they all play off of each other, Mm -hmm. um, where they have a single set of rules, they could be the third universe. Yeah. Instead, you have, uh, well, you had the Wildstorm universe, you had the, the Top Cow universe, you had the Spawn universe, you had the Savage Dragon universe, you had everybody so so desperate to have their creator own thing and have their own control that they they lost the ability to um, to compete with these these comic book companies that that are all about a shared universe mm-hmm. and. In mine, I was like, I was like, okay, we get funding for this. I'm willing to divest myself of actual ownership of these things to build something better, right? To build mm-hmm. something for the future. Because when I'm dead, I don't care if I own it anyways, right? Right. But I want next century to be the blacklist comics century. You know, it's like, I don't know, just, just, I'm, I'm far thinking in, in my plan. And, and starting it with Lone Star is like Marvel. Uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm-hmm. starting with Captain America. Oh, you know, one right. great story, and then you open up the door to Thor, right? And then you open up the door to the Hulk, which you know, for better or worse. Um, and then you open up, <laughs> you open the doors for Ant Man. You open the doors. You 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 lead into um, new paths that that form a greater unit and eventually you get to the freaking infinity war right Mm -hmm. you don't start with an avengers movie right you you get all of your fans to identify and fall in love with your individual characters and then someday if i want to do a group book where somehow they all come together that's great actually i do have i have a i can't decide if it's five or ten years but i have a plan for a future event called harmony where all of my different things come together in a singular um, sort of an infinitely gauntlet type of thing. Because you know what? Remember 1980, what was it? 1985, 1986 when infinity got, and you're like, or, or um, not infinity gauntlet, uh, um, secret wars. Yeah. Right. Secret right. wars. Oh my God. Gosh, I got Spider Man and Wolverine and Captain America. Everybody's in one book, right? <laughs> because you loved all the characters. And it's already. earned. It's not yeah. like, hey, oh, you Dan. should care about these yeah. guys. It's like, I do care about these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I, my vision is I'm stealing my vision from Jim Shooter. You know? <laughs> right. I'm starting. Over this is the '80s. You know what? Donald Trump, uh, Re- Ronald Reagan's president again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Comics are going to have a new golden age, and I'm starting it with Lone Star. That's my. Oh, I can't wait. Well, and yeah. you're going to actually have change, not the um, illusion of change or you know the semblance yeah. of change. Stuff's going to happen, and it's going to matter, and people are going to care about it. Clay and I have talked about that for so long. When you have the illusion of change over time, nobody cares. It gets stagnant. It's just like old, recycled you know, stuff. This is going to be something fresh and new, and I love it. I love the yeah, idea. Yeah. Agreed. The energy's there. That's – yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. And, and cool. you know, it's – I am also tailoring it for – the the modern audience because the modern mm-hmm. audience is a lot more savvy than you know third grade kids in the 80s <clears throat> you know nobody yeah. if if your character is running around wearing spandex you better have a darn good explanation that's right that's right, right. <laughs> that's right mm-hmm. you know I, that like, makes me think of the first of, uh, avengers movie and how everyone wanted the original captain america outfit for the first avengers movie and he got the footy pajamas and it was kind of <laughs> like um it doesn't look as good as I thought it would, right. but and you know, and then we got the the really cool upgrades in the in the follow up movies. But yes, I, I I agree. If you're gonna wear spandex, it better be darn good reason. Yeah, yeah. Like I do have a character who runs around in, in essentially spandex, uh, superhero G, but he's an imaginary friend. He's the creation of a child. So mm-hmm. you know he creates this character, and he's more along the lines of the tick than anything else. Oh, um, that's his, fun. That's fun. Right. But, but his, his, his kid gives him <laughs> his powers be- through his imagination. And it's, it's through an entire, I, I mean, I, it, he comes from a book series I did 
before called the imaginaries. But in that, so, so this is what I did with, with blacklist is um, I've been creating characters for a quarter century, actually long since I was a kid. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, well now I'm, I want to do this cohesive universe. So I just started pulling from all my IPs and I'm like, would this do well in my universe or do I have to take this and amalgamate it with this to fit it in my universe. And, you know, so I started pulling all my stuff and the stuff, some stuff got left by the side and some stuff got brought in and I even started creating new stuff. But yeah, this, this dude, I could fill a comic shelf if I had. The, <laughs> yeah. The, the, right. That that's exciting. You're building worlds in a universe. Yeah. Gosh, this is great. Coming on board, do you have um, any other creators that you can mention coming on board, or is it just you? Like, what what I'm else not, can you? I'm not gonna. I do have creators who have agreed to be part of it, but nice. I'm not. I'm not gonna bring anybody up until. Um, the, you know, they just, it was just. It was just like I asked them when I put together uh, the pitch deck and and stuff or the white paper. I'm like. You know, would you be interested in doing it? And if they said yes, then I added them to my white paper. That's exciting. Okay, uh, that's yeah, and I'll have to like buy to find out. That's that's great. That's cool. <laughs> well, you know, and things change. This was right. this was a year and a half ago. I wrote this thing, and if if you know somebody like it, the time comes and I'm like, hey, you ready? And they're going to be like, well, I'm kind of tied up, so I can't. Right. Go, so I no, can't. but it's just it's just exciting because you're. I don't know. I like the idea of another universe that's coming along that actually isn't bogged down by, I, I don't know. And I'm probably going to get blacklisted from podcasting you know, <laughs> ever again. But I was, I'm, I'm like, I feel like all the best stories have been done with like the Marvel DC characters. We're just, let I me, mean, how many times are you going to retail the dark Phoenix saga? I mean, it mm-hmm. seems like it just keeps coming back and back and back and back this is something fresh that you can do things with and that's exciting for fans. And I guess going into my next question is what would you tell someone who is an aspiring like writer artist? What would you tell them to do? Like learn. create your own stuff? Would you? No, I tell them yeah. to learn their craft. Mm-hmm. If you're a writer, go get two books, um, save the cat by Blake Snyder. Yeah. And then Story by Robert McGee. Oh, uh, that's one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So start with Save the Cat. <laughs> I was hoping you would say Story. I was like, that, that's no, gotta... no, 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 no. Save the Cat is the uh, junior college version of writing. Mm-hmm. And it's very good. It really, really simplifies a lot of what is in Story. And it makes it much, it's, it's like a bite-sized uh, version, right? And then Story is like the PhD of writing. <laughs> Yeah, start with Save the Cat. It'll help you to craft good, well beaded stories, well well crafted outlines and whatnot. But then when you want to get all the nooks and crannies, you want to get the butter in all the nooks and crannies, you you crack in a story and just uh study that one. And then if if you're an artist, you pick up George Bridgman's uh complete guide to drawing from life. You pick up Andrew Loomis illustrations. Oh, who are some of the others? Well, actually those are two probably my two the two best ones to get. And you learn, you learn your structure. You learn from, from the stick figure to how to draw the eyelash. You know, it's, it's, you get in there and you learn your craft. You don't bother wasting anyone else's time with you telling them what a great comic book you have to pitch. If you don't know what you're doing Mm -hmm. and it's going to take time and it's going to take dedication it's not a hobby. It is a vocation. If you want to do this, you have to earn it. That's really good. That That's is really very good. good. On that on that same note, because I know you have mentioned throughout the podcast several of these characters. Uh, you've mentioned Lone Star. I think you said, uh, uh, oh my gosh, Super, Super G? Superhero G. Superhero G, sorry. Uh, but can you go ahead and tell us about some of these other characters that – you've already started to promote a little bit. I think there's devil dog, uh, hourglass, uh, cyber Jack. Who are some of these characters that you're bringing into the blacklist comics universe and introduce the guy, these, the, all the listeners to who these people are and why they should be excited about them. Um, gosh, I don't know if I want to, I want to, I kind of want to, <laughs> I, 
you know, it's 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 funny. It's because like people will ask me to tell them all about Lone Star. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no, not because okay. I don't know his whole story. I have his entire miniseries treatmented out. I it's it's got such an M Night Shyamalan ending. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to let on because there's things if, if if I tell you his his origin, you know, I I give away the ending and it's like people are going to get to the last <laughs> issue and they're going to be like, oh my god, no, I saw that coming. Uh, it's going to be like a, a Batman Fifty situation. You don't want that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I can tell you from Lone Star that you know he is. He, he was drafted into a, a secret soldier type of program when he was on the brink of death in World War II. And the, the program is called the Unknown Soldiers. Mm. And mm. when it's, it's not all the time, but when, you know, they, they keep the Unknown Soldiers to six. So one of them perishes, they go to whatever the, the, the war, war du jour is. And when someone is not going to make it, they take that person and they give him what makes him a uh, powered individual. And so they, they keep the numbers to six and their job is it's like super black ops. It's like no one in the government knows about it. It was, I th- if I had it correct, I have it on the treatment, but um, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt, maybe who who signed it into law I but it was it. like super super um secret like secret service doesn't know about it. nobody flipping knows about this and you know those missing trillions of dollars from the from the military budget you know some of it goes missing for a reason and mm-hmm. they have really high high tech stuff but their job is to hunt monsters so oh, i like it yeah, so um, the first first series, they are stationed in Los Angeles, tracking down and wiping out the uh, a vampire coven. Oh, sold, sold, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, see, I told you you'd hear a knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That is amazing. Um, yeah. Teddy Roosevelt too, like just. Teddy Roosevelt, sold too. I love it. <laughs> love it. Okay, I'm going to totally switch gears. Um, Clay and I on the show, we do um, a segment called Character Resurrections. And I don't know, we sort of based it off of like the whole Mort of the Month type thing. But we pick a character that we feel like maybe needs a little bit of love and change him around, give him, a, you know, like a new fresh coat of paint new origin story, something to make him viable for, you know, modern times. And I guess don't want to put you on the spot, but I guess I am sorry. Uh, who would you, uh, DC Marvel image, anybody, who would you like to resurrect that you think might need some love character wise? Uncle Ben. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> that is gold. That is well worth. Like you, you win, and I'm calling it right now, the uh, Golden Wheat Cake Award right now. This is great. Because he's the one guy you yes. can't resurrect. That's right. He, yeah, and they used to say that about Bucky and Jason Todd, and Uncle Ben's still holding that down. Like he's. Yeah. <laughs> So what would you do for Uncle Ben or just he's back? (laughs) (laughs) He's a government assassin who doesn't play by the rules. Um, I would like to ultimately make him a Spider-Man villain. Oh, Oh, the the ultimate betrayal. Yes. You know, and be like uh, when he reveals himself to to Peter, this is not what I meant by great power. Oh, it was me, Austin. Oh, man. It was me, cold blood. <laughs> Dang, like he faked his death and he's been the one pulling the strings the whole time. Oh. Dang. I like that. That's good. <laughs> so, oh, man. It's, it's like wrecking my world right now. Oh, I love it. Peter Parker. Dude. Like, that's the Parker luck right there. Exactly. <laughs> Holy cow. 
That's when yes. Parker really hangs up his. his yeah, he's <laughs> done. Fire Man, no more. And you got <laughs> yeah. the tra- the iconic trash can. It's going in. Well, let me ask one more question. Going back to Blacklist, um, yeah. there are literally there's literally almost an infinite number of names you could have chosen for a new comic book company. You know, Saber Cat Comics, whatever <laughs> you think of. You know, but I mean, like, why Blacklist Comics? What what inspired that name? Because it's the nail on the head. Mm. 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 I've been blacklisted. Um, the guys who I want to work with have faced being blacklisted or have been blacklisted. Chuck Dixon, for Pete's sake. What? Created Bane. Wrote freaking wrote he was, Robin. Yeah, Batman. he was my Robin guy. for. Her. He gets blacklisted for being a Republican. Oh, man. And I'm sorry, but what you meant for it, evil... I mean, mm. for good. I'm taking that <laughs> name. <laughs> I got nice, you. nice. <laughs> Pennies and coppers. Yes, there we go. <laughs> That's cool. And you know what? If if, if you're okay with if you're okay with this, Mike, would not all of our listeners are maybe familiar with Comicsgate, or not all of, all of our listeners maybe are familiar with what's been going on in the comic book community? Because I know that this this whole new venture that you're doing is kind of a product of what's been going on, but. Can you maybe give some sort of our of, listeners? Yeah. yeah, I mean, to a degree. So, so do you mind giving our li- listeners a little bit of details as to maybe what spurred this on a little bit? Um, well, like I said, I've been I've been planning this, and I've been working with a partner um, to try to facilitate funding to get this off the ground for a year and a half now. But when I saw, first of all, and I don't want to use this as an example, but this is what happened. Alt hero, right? Vox day, alt right media personality. What are, I don't even, I don't even mm-hmm. know. I, I just read some of this guy's stuff and I'm like, um, pass, but <laughs> <God>. <laughs> well, he's not a big fan of half breeds apparently. And I am one. So, um, <laughs> wow. it's funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. But his, his, he did a crowdfunding thing and, and made a quarter of a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. And then Diversity in Comics comes along, puts up uh, their his new Jawbreakers thing for um, on Indiegogo. Man, he's up to uh, three hundred and I think seventy thousand dollars now. Wow! Wow! Right. And uh, then Ethan comes along and these guys you know diversity and ethan are you know have built up i mean not huge but just decent audiences on youtube diversity yep. has eighty thousand. Mm-hmm. um ethan has 67 or 68 now mm-hmm. and they're just growing by thousands every month ethan's only bought on there for like eight months right, right. yeah yeah and yeah, yeah, and lo and behold all you need is a few thousand people plunking down 25, 50 bucks. And Ethan's Ethan's over 400,000, $425,000 right now, something like that. He's going to be at $500,000 easy by the end of his campaign. Oh, my. Which, which he extended. And so it just looked like an opportunity to fund at least the first book. Because I, like I said, I've been doing this for a while. I already had the first issue of Lone Star done. Because I'd been working on it. And then, you know, I started my own. I got on to celebrate with Ethan the other night when he crossed the $400,000 threshold, which was like literally just a few days ago. Yeah. And he was just so excited. And he was saying, you know, Mike, get your Indiegogo going. I'll, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll make sure you get over $700,000. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so, but <laughs> but hey, you know what? If you can get me enough money that I can do this book myself and then also build my YouTube channel at the same time, then then I can start this process. They have a scientifically proven formula. They've tested it, they've retested <laughs> it, and it's working. So, if I can do what they're doing, I can make this a reality. I Part of my um, white paper written a year and a half ago was crowdfunding each comic as it came out. So the fact that 
uh, because I had another friend uh, who does who does other stuff, not comics, but um, yeah, and he makes like half a million dollars every time he kickstarts something. Oh, and wow. he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, there's a there's a there's a full on formula to to do this, and you know, it does the way he does it. It takes a mailing list and it takes money for advertising, which you know, if you had say EIB backing you, if you had mm-hmm. if you had a right wing media personality backing you, you could do this easily, right? But right. now. Apparently, the option that works is I become my own right wing media personality on YouTube. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can do this. Let me let me take care. I can of this. do this. I yeah. can. So yeah, so I'm going to launch it in a couple of weeks, and um, and then I'm going to do other subsequent books, and hopefully, hopefully, I can make enough money that I can just continue this cycle and grow that audience because. Like when you're when you're like the email list thing, right? Every everybody that buys something from you, you get their contact information. So if they like it, then the next time you shoot out an email to all of those people saying book two is ready, or here's my next project. You like my first one? Get my next one. And that list just grows with every new campaign. Plus mm-hmm. I'm growing my YouTube channel at the same time, so I'm getting new viewers, new relationships with with people online, and it's just a formula that I that I see working if I'm willing to put the time and effort into it. Just like I gave the advice, put the time and effort into it and earn it. I love it. I love earn that. It. Earn it. You got to earn it. No, I can't wait uh, to check this out. This is going to be amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's just been uh, fantastic talking to you and, you know, learning, you know, where you got your inspiration, where you still get your inspiration, where you're going now. It's, it's just really exciting. And I don't know, I, I just enjoyed, you know, hearing your passion about your creations and about like, you know, your, your past in comics. It's just, it's been very inspiring to me uh, personally as an aspiring podcaster and somebody who's trying to get into this field, it's, it's been great just to listen to you talk. I really oh. appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. And uh, you know what? I want to try and fuse my, like kind of my two last questions into one, but we'll, we'll let this be the last question of the podcast. And then we definitely want to uh, let people know where they can get behind you and uh, show you some love, but Okay, so Mike Miller just actually lost power, so we're cutting this in real quick, and he's on his phone, so everyone knows. Okay, so I, I had one last question I wanted to try and and uh, fuse in here at the end before we uh, tell our listeners how they can get behind you and sh- show you some love. You've mentioned in other some of your other YouTube videos how with Blacklist you want to honor the guidelines similar to the Comics Code Authority um, mm-hmm. from way back in the day. Um, at the same time, I'm curious, is Blacklist open to submissions and kind of what are the submission guidelines for other creators who want to become a part of Blacklist? Um, I don't think Blacklist will be open for submissions as in story content for quite a while. I'm going to be very picky and choosy about what comes into the universe because, like I said, the, the universe has to have cohesion and a guiding force. And that's me. So I, I don't want to just drop characters in willy nilly because even if they're the coolest characters on earth, it's like, but you don't fit into the plan here. So that may change over time. I, I mean, as far as submitting for actual like writers and artists to work on the blacklist properties, gosh, that's, that's a bridge to cross in a year or two probably. So. At that time, I'll I'll revisit it and uh, and I'll make it known. Okay, that make that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And do you and do you feel that like a lot of your properties or books that are going to come out, like are you going to try and produce them under a guideline similar to the Comics Code? And I, I'm asking because I'm actually a huge fan of the Comics Code. I liked it a lot. I liked the parameters that it put on the books. I thought it made creators a lot more creative and and have to to reach to do more um, more interesting stories, but. Again, I'm just curious your take on the comics code or on certain guidelines that Blacklist would would put out there. I, I, I do. I think most of the comics code was very beneficial. I, I mean, I thought there was stuff that was a little dated, 
Sure. But yeah, most of the comics. It's like even when I was a kid, I made this point in another video. Even when I was a kid and Electra shoved a sigh through one, mm. someone's box, I'm like, wow, he's got really stretchy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> they have black blood. Yes. <laughs> black blood and stretchy clothes. What are, is this guy an alien? Um, <laughs> he must. So stuff like that doesn't make sense. Not that I'm not that I'm going to be a proponent proponent of pointless gore, but again, we are dealing with a nine uh, not not a 1983 audience. We, this mm-hmm. is 2018. People are a lot more sophisticated, and I have to tailor mm-hmm. even the comics code. I have to tailor to to reality, basically. Um, but yeah, most of the comics code I want back in pretty pretty full effect in in Blacklist. So. That's nice. Awesome. That's great. Okay. Well, again, Mike, thanks so much for joining us, man. We super appreciate all your time. Oh, very much. Schedule and uh, where can people go and show you some love? Where can they subscribe to you or give you a thumbs up? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Abacus Mike A B A C U S, like the calculating device, or uh, YouTube. Please follow me on YouTube. I'm trying to build up my viewership there as quickly as possible over 400 yes yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> told you um it was, uh, it's mike miller um or if you're typing in the url then it's uh youtube.com forward slash underdog mike i believe yeah so yeah find me there fantastic Wonderful. awesome all right well again mike thanks so much for being our special guest and guys thanks so much for joining us we appreciate you And uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. Absolutely. Take care, guys.